So this is admittedly uh, one of the more bizarre gospels, right? There's something bizarre going on here. It seems like Jesus is being a cruel bully to a woman in need, and then she one-ups him with a good, quick one-liner, and she's reminding him, hey, you're supposed to be a good, kind Messiah, right? It's just as bizarre. What's going on here? All right, let's dig into it a little bit. So we've got this unnamed Canaanite woman. And when you hear, when you come across someone in Scripture, you've heard me say this before, who's unnamed, that's where you insert yourself into the story, right? So this unnamed woman coming from this land of darkness, this land of, you know, the ways that are antithetical to God's ways, Canaanite, right? So she's journeying away from that place towards the Lord. And you got the Lord journeying away from his place, the Father's house, into this land of darkness and gloom. So you got this mutual kind of collision course. Her daughter's sick and she's crying out, Lord, son of David, have pity on me. And the disciples, the disciples are just basically annoyed, right? It's probably the end of the day. They probably hadn't eaten in a while, right? Because they always, they never have food, right? So they're hangry and you got this lady crying out after him and they're just like, get her away from us, Lord, right? So after all of that crying out, after all of that imploring, we hear this crushing line, Jesus does not say a word to her. Why? Well, because God is cruel and mean and heartless. Just kidding. Okay. No, no, it's obviously not that. But I can see her putting herself in this mindset thinking, maybe, like, maybe I should have said different words. Maybe I should have prayed differently. Maybe I shouldn't have been so loud and needy. Maybe I shouldn't have been so... I don't know, maybe I should have realized that the incarnate Son of God is not going to waste his precious Messiah time on earth on my little itty-bitty concerns. I shouldn't have been so bold to ask him for anything. Maybe I shouldn't have prayed that way. You ever been there? Crying out, needing God, and it seems like there's just a deafening silence coming from heaven. When Jesus, it seems like, isn't saying a word. Why? Why? Because he himself is the word. He himself is the word. He himself is everything the Father has ever and will ever say to humanity. In those seasons, those moments of life, those moments that we go through where Jesus' vocal silence, when prayer just feels like you're chewing on sand, it's this deafening silence. Those moments, those seasons, it's a crucible that's burning away our illusions that we can make God do anything. We so easily forget that we're not God. Or that we, like, if I just put in the right input, say the right novena, do, 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 prayed 55 days, do, 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 said 50 rosaries, output the grace exactly that I'm asking for. It's, he's not a genie. It's not magic. It's not how this works. What he does in that vocal silence, in that burning away, right, he's increasing our ache. He's increasing our desire. He's increasing our feeling, the felt need of dependency, which we don't really like, but we have to have that. We have to have that. And if we stay in the silence like that Canaanite woman did, and if we don't turn elsewhere, we become more and more irresistible to God's mercy. See, when God delays in responding, he's not being cruel. He, he's, he's doing the only thing he can do to reveal to our hearts our true condition, which is you are utterly dependent. It's not a scary posture. It feels like a scary posture because we live in a fallen world and to be so dependent on finite love and finite goodness is scary because we get disappointed. But to be utterly dependent on perfect love and perfect goodness, there's nothing scary about that. See, in his delay, Jesus is maneuvering our hearts into this posture of prostration. It's like, laying yourself down. That's what happens, this woman. It says, then she comes and does him homage and says, Lord, help me. It's the only authentically human posture. It's what the Magi did before the new baby king. They came and did him homage. It's what Peter did at the great draft of fishes. He falls down before him. Lord, I'm not worthy, right? This Lord, help me. Or just from yesterday's gospel, Peter crying out, Lord, save me. It sounds a lot like a kid crying in the middle of the night for mommy and daddy. Like Jesus wasn't mincing words when he said that you have to become like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
You have to. We have to become like children, which means that we have to enter into that need and dependency. And her heart, this Canaanite woman, her heart responds to his silence and to his analogy of her being like a little dog. And she just says, yes, Lord, like I am a little dog and I'm lost and I'm in need of a master. And I'm so willing to be a little dog sitting at your feet beneath the table if that means that I can still be close to you. I don't need to be a finely dressed guest. I'll just be a poor little dog if that means that you'll feed me. And it's at that moment that Jesus responds, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Here's what's extraordinary. This is the only time in the gospel where that word, oh, is used to praise somebody. You have Jesus saying, oh, you Pharisees, you brood of vipers, oh, you hypocrites, right? We hear Jesus using oh to lay into people, but this is the only time where oh is used to praise somebody. Like precisely at the moment that she owns her own needs, she owns her littleness, she owns all of that, that she is little before this mountain of mercy, that the avalanche of mercy comes upon her. Oh, woman, great is your faith. And just like in the gospel, so today in this Mass, Jesus, who went to the lowest place, he's born in a cave, he's raised in obscurity, dying on a cross, descending into hell. Jesus comes to feed us little ones who started out, we started out the Mass saying the same words that that woman did, right? Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. It's what she says. Lord, son of David, have pity on me, have mercy on me. And he feeds us with himself, with the scraps that fall from the master's table. The scraps just happen to be him, right? Little crumbs just falling from the master's table to feed you and I. Our mission then is to leave this church and to try real hard not to puff ourselves up, but to stay little, stay little, and go feed someone else with the gift of your life. That's what this gospel has given us today. May we enter into that. May we be little at the feet of Jesus, dependent at the feet of Jesus. Like this woman, this little dog, sitting at the feet of the master beneath the table. Amen.